In this video, I'm going to explain the process of creating a Zoom meeting with registrations. The advantages and disadvantages of registration. So let's dive into it. When you create a Zoom meeting and enable registration, you can create a customized registration page with banners, logo, and add fields that participants must enter. This gives you greater flexibility in managing events as you can plan your event based on the number of registrations. In this example, I created this banner clearly showing the details of the event and added the organization logo to the registration page. The name and email address are standard fields of Zoom. I created two custom fields, the district and the club name, and made them mandatory as indicated by the red asterisk sign. Let us see how we can do something like this in Zoom. The process starts when you schedule a new meeting. Enter the details of the meeting, for example, choose the date and time, and the rest of the parameters as you would normally do. To convert the event to a registered event, all you have to do is click on the registration checkbox. Once you enable registration, participants can join the event only after completing the registration process, which may be approved or rejected by the organizer. Let me complete the process and save the event. Here is the event I have created as a registration event. When I scroll to the bottom of the page, I have a new option called Registration and Branding. Let's first set up the branding for the event. Branding allows you to define two elements for your registration page, the banner and a logo. The suggested dimensions for the banner is 640 pixels by 200 pixels and this is the maximum dimension 1280 by 400. So make sure that when you create a graphic for your banner, it follows this dimensions mentioned here. Similarly, when you want to upload a logo, the suggested dimensions are square logo of 200 by 200 and the maximum dimensions are 400 pixels by 400. Let me choose a banner and a logo that I have on my desktop. So this is my banner. And this is how it will appear. Similarly, I can upload a logo that I have on my desktop. And now my branding is completed. Let's move to the registration configuration. This page allows us to view the current registrations. It is zero as of now. To view the registrations, we can click on the view button. The page also shows the registration options. Currently, it is set up for automatic approval. This means anyone who registers can attend the event. We can change all this by modifying the registration setup. And to modify, click on the edit button. The first thing you want to decide is whether the registration will be automatic or manual. You could choose a manual approval option if the number of participants are limited and you want to ensure only the participants that meet your criteria attend the event. For example, they are club members. If you want to receive an email whenever someone registers, click on the notification setting. This is ideal if your event is small. If you expect hundreds of registrations, your inbox will get flooded with all the emails. I'll switch it off for now. Other options that can be enabled or disabled are whether the registration should be automatically closed after the event date, whether you want to allow attendees to join from multiple devices with the same link, and finally, whether you want to show the social share buttons like Facebook, Twitter, and email. If the social share buttons are enabled, it allows participants to quickly share the event with their friends with a simple click. Next is the list of questions that you want the attendees to fill. First name and email address are required and enabled by default. 
You can choose to add any field from the list of standard fields provided by Zoom and decide whether they are mandatory or can be left empty. Let's say I want to enable last name as a mandatory field, city also as a mandatory field and finally questions and comments. I will leave it optional by not clicking on this checkbox. Finally, you can create custom questions that participants must answer and make them required or optional. Let's say I want to add a question for the participant to enter his club name. So click on the new question and pose your question to the participant. Enter your club name. Let's say I want it to be a mandatory field. So I will make sure that the required is on and it will be a short answer. That means he will type a short text as his response for this question. Click on the create button. Let's add another question and this time I want the participant to choose from a list of available options. Let's say we want to know his designation in the club. So I'll ask the question, please enter your designation and the available choices are let's say president, VP education, VP membership and let's say others. Click on the create button and save both the questions. If we want to preview how our registration page will look like, go up and copy the link and open it in your web browser. As you can see, the banner page comes on top. Your logo is here. The title of the event, the date and time. And these are the questions that I have created. As you can see, first name, last name are mandatory fields. Email also is a mandatory field. We made CT as a mandatory field. The questions and comments, as you can see, is not a mandatory field. The club name we had created as a short answer. So let's say a club name is Bright Horizons. And as you can see in the drop down for your designation, it shows us the four options that we had typed while creating the question. So the person chooses president, fills up his details and then clicks on the register button. Once your registration goes live, you can come back to the registration page to check the number of registrations, how many are approved, how many are pending. In this case, I have an event where I created manual approvals and I can see that as of now, there are 107 registrations out of which 103 are approved. If I want to check which are the other four registrations, click on the edit button. And here we can see that I have 103 approved registrations for the event and four are pending approval. Let's say I want to approve this person. So click on his name and click approve. So now it has become 104 registrations. For registrations that are already approved, you can also take actions on those participants. For example, click on a name and you can either cancel the registration or you can resend the confirmation email. You can scroll through all the registrations by clicking on the page button. If you want to download the list of all registrations in an Excel file, click on the account management, go to reports and choose the meeting reports. Choose the event date. For example, click on search button and this is the event. Choose and say generate the report. You have a choice of selecting all the registrants or only the approved registrants. Let's say I want to send them a reminder email with some additional information about the event. So I can click on approved registrations and click continue. It will appear in your report queue and you can click download. This will download the list as a CSV file which you can easily open in Excel and then take further actions on that data. So there you have it. If you want to host 
an event in Zoom with registration, then this process will allow you to have complete control of the event. Now what could be the disadvantages of a Zoom registration event? If you want to share your event with others with a simple ID and a password, this is not possible now. Every person who wants to attend the event must complete the registration process. And that can be quite a challenge when people want to join at the last minute and they are struggling to find the registration link, fill up the registration form and then join the meeting. But if you want an event where you have complete control, then registrations is the way to go.